Good morning, church. How are we feeling today? Come on. We are light in I want to crowd. say good morning to our online family as well. Today we're continuing the series that we've been in, Hearing the Voice of God. Today is part two. That's right. But before we kind of get and going, we want to dig I thought in and you were going to say something else. Announcement <laughs> that I I'm so excited about because it has been many many years coming, and I'm like beside myself. So That's go ahead right. and tell them what we're doing. So Brandy told you that midweek is kicking back off. We're super excited as we go back into the fall. But something very cool that is happening this Wednesday night is Accelerate Student Ministry is launching a bus ministry. Now that's where you can clap. Don't understand this, but you know, there are students in our community who would love to come to church, who would love to be in the house of God, but their mom and dad just don't attend. They don't go to church. And so, you know what? We're going to make it possible for those students to be here in an incredible ministry. And the reason I'm telling you is simply this if you know of a student in the Grove School District, now you're saying, ah, oh, we're from Matt County or Seneca or Wyandotte, we are going to have buses going to those schools in the future. We're we're starting with Grove because it's our it's the closest to us as we work out the kinks. But we're sending one bus to Grove Middle School for Grove High School and Middle School students. If you know of anybody who would love to come to church, they want to jump on the bus. Even if you need to ride the bus out and your parents are coming to life groups, you can totally do that. All right. Here's all you need to do: either stop in the lobby and grab a permission form that your parents will fill out one time, saying you have permission to ride the MMC bus. Or jump on the website, go to the Accelerate page under Get Connected, and you can click the form, print it out, fill it out, and bring it to the bus driver, which would be Pastor Brad this week. On Wednesday night, Brad will bus be Bus driver driving. Brad. You know Come the on, funny somebody. thing about that? If you don't know our Y'all, background. I love driving a bus. You have no idea. He literally I loves love driving it. a bus. It's I creepy. Love like, it. it's so weird. It's not creepy. Don't say that. <laughs> Not only because you're creeping on children, but... It just went south. Since he- I love driving a bus because I love students, and I love fist bumping them and loving on them, and I just like getting in their lives, and I love we it. We drove buses I all through it. college as a necessity to pay our bills, but Brad has forever had a love to just drive. He Boom. loves saying hi to the kids. Kids went back to school on Wednesday and, or Thursday, and he was like, man, I'm kind of man, sad that I'm not driving a I'm bus driving this morning. And I'm like, you are so weird. Like, nobody else is sad they're not driving a bus, but only I love the kids. you. But love Bus Ministry launches out Wednesday. We also want to just ask you to pray. Pray because this is an awesome opportunity to reach out and win so many more students for Jesus. So be praying with us as we launch Bus Ministry on Wednesday. Thank you. Okay, uh, so last week we did start this new series, and um, I want to do a quick recap because truly at the end of the day, we don't want to just bring you messages and you take notes and then you forget about it. We truly want you to get it deep in your spirit. And so we try to be repetitive as much as we can so that you can just kind of consume it and get get the download. And so just real quick, last week, we gave you three things and I want to give those to you again. And the first thing that we learned is that God wants to speak to his people. That first and foremost, you as a believer need to understand that God wants to talk to all of humanity. He wants to talk to all people. The question is, are we listening? And we saw this example in the story of Samuel, 12 year old boy, God speaks to him. And in the same respect, God wants to speak to you. The second thing is something that we need to do. And it seems very simple, seems very obvious, but very, very powerful. And and there's a lot of people who actually don't do it. And that is this, we need to ask God to speak to us. How often do you literally just say, God, I, I want you to speak to me Your servant is listening. I'm listening. God, my ears are open. I want to hear you. And the third thing that we talked about is that we need to develop our ears as believers, as followers of Christ. We need to develop our our spiritual ears to be able to hear what God is saying to us. And so we hope uh, today and next week that we really will bring you some valuable uh, biblical insight that will just take you three notches forward in your ability to hear from God in a clear and powerful way. So you might ask yourself, why, why is it so important that I even hear from God? This is, a, this is a really powerful and a valid question. Why is it so important? I mean, can't I just come to Christ and just go to work and raise my kids and, you know, just retire and, you know, get a financial plan and just die and go to heaven and that would all be great, right? Why do I need to spend any focus, any emphasis in my life hearing from God? Well, 
The answer can be found uh, with the prophet Jeremiah in chapter 33 and verse 3. This was God's command to Jeremiah, and it's also God's command to you, and that is that we would call to him. God says, call to me, and here's what he will do. He will answer you. Yes. If you call out to God, if you cry out to God, God wants to give you an answer. And not only that, he wants to reveal to you great and hidden things about your life. These are things that prior to this moment have been inaccessible in the spirit. But now that you are making an effort, now that you are showing that you are hungry for God, that you want to hear from God, you're crying out to God saying, God, I want to hear a download. I want to hear your voice. I want to hear what you have for my life. Guess what? He shows up and he says, I will answer you and I will reveal things about your life that you didn't even know. You think about this. So powerful. God wants to show you these previously inaccessible things as we download from him what he has for us. He wants us to hear from him. So this morning, we're going to go to the book of John. We're going to go to John chapter 10. You can go there in your word this morning. You can pull it up on you version, or you can just check out the screen behind me. But either way, we're going to be in the book of John. Now, John is an interesting book. I love it. It's written by the disciples that says he was loved by Jesus. But in this book, he lays out seven I am statements where Jesus is declaring who he is in our life. So in John chapter 10, we see where he says, I am the good shepherd. And this is like the fourth I am statement. Now you've probably heard this before that we are, you know, people are like sheep and Jesus is the good shepherd. But I wanna take you to a passage and I wanna walk you through this in a way that hopefully it opens our eyes to what he was really saying. So in John chapter 10 and verse 24, it says this, my sheep, this is Jesus talking, my sheep hear, say hear. They hear my voice. So obviously if sheep hear the voice, then Jesus is talking. Do you agree? Okay, so he's talking to all believers. We all, God wants to speak to all of us. He says, I know them and they follow me. So here's what you gotta recognize and realize. It doesn't matter who you are as a follower of Jesus Christ, you should expect to hear the voice of God in your life. You should expect it. That should be something that is just like, yes, I'm gonna hear the voice of God because I am one of his followers. Now, in this passage in John chapter 10, Jesus spends the entire chapter laying out this picture. And I kind of want to help you to understand culturally what was going on. Because how many of you guys raise sheep? Anybody? Okay, that's what I thought. So we don't understand too much. For somebody. We don't understand too much about how to raise sheep in that culture. So I'm going to help you to understand this. So basically, in that day and time, shepherds were very, very common. So when Jesus gave this example, everybody understood. Okay. So there would be a shepherd, and most shepherds would have 100 sheep in their flock. All right. You ever heard the story of Jesus leaving the 99 to find the what? Okay, exactly. So this is also another example. So most shepherds would have 100 sheep and during the day they would take their sheep around and the sheep would follow them and they would go find green pastures and they would find the waters for them to get their drink during the day. But at night they would bring them into a sheep fold. Now I had to do some research to understand this because I was like, what's the significance? There is always so much more, guys, than just what you see right here. You got to go a little deeper. You got to study. So I begin to understand the sheepfold was a place where lots of shepherds, about up to 10, would bring their herds, all right, into this area. And it was, a, it was like a walled area. So we would think about it being a fence, okay, but it was walls, this walled area. And there was an opening for where a gatekeeper would sit or lie down. There wasn't a gate, like in our mind, like build some fences and throw in a gate, like, and, like lead those sheep. That's how we would do it, but that's not what they did. So at night, they would bring their hundred sheep into the sheepfold, and lots of shepherds would bring them. And so all the sheep would get in there and they'd get to connect and mingle, kind of like midweek. They'd hang out all together in the evenings. And one shepherd would stay with all of these herds while all the other shepherds could go into town, grab some dinner, hang out, whatever. But one guy stayed behind. And he would say, culturally, they say that he would sleep as the gate. He would sleep in that opening. 
keeping any predators from coming in and harming the sheep and keeping the sheep from going out to where they could be harmed as well. All right? But here's what's really interesting is the next morning, I'm thinking, you got a mess on your hands, people. Like you have just mixed all those herds. How in the world are you going to separate them when it's time to go? Well, the interesting thing about shepherds during that day is when they would show up at the gate, they would literally call their sheep by name. And the sheep would know the voice of their shepherd and would come to them and follow them out. They would leave the other herds and they would like just begin to line up behind their shepherd as the shepherd called out their names. Now to me, that is mind blowing because it's like, how in the world did the shepherd just look out there and he just knows there's Johnny and there's Sally and there's, you know, Sam and whatever, who knows what names? I'm sure they were ridiculous Bible names. sheep names, names, babe. I know. I don't know sheep names. Okay. You got that? We need to work on that before third service. Okay. Well, let's go right out a hundred sheep names, Brad, because we've got time for that. But they would call them all by name. And so I want to take you into this passage in John chapter 10. And we're going to read this together. And you're going to see this in a different light than you ever have before. Check this out. Jesus says in verse 1, I tell you the truth. Anyone who speaks over, who sneaks over the wall of the sheepfold. Remember, that's this big gate, this big wall. Rather than going through the gate, must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep, check it out, recognize his voice and they come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and then he leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them and what do they do? But they follow him. Why? Because they know his voice. Jump down to verse nine. Yes, I am the gate. This is Jesus talking. Yes, I am that gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely and find good pastures. The thief's purpose is to steal and to kill and destroy. But my purpose, Jesus' purpose for our life is to give us a rich and a satisfying life. Back to verse 27. Again, he says, my sheep do what? Come on now. They listen to my voice, I know them and they follow me. This is such a beautiful passage when we realize that God has created and formed each one of us. Isaiah 43 says that he has formed you and he has called you by name. Not only has he called you by name, he's given you your name. The Bible says that he has counted a number for every hair on your head. That's how intricate he knows you. And I don't know what happens to those of you who have no hair any longer. I think he knows where the follicles were. And he knows, he knows those. I don't have to take this abuse. But the fact is, he wants to know you in such an intimate way, just like you know your kids. Your children, I don't know, I'm pretty sure this would be with all parents. But you know, you could be on the other side of a store and you could call out your kid's name and guess what they would do? They'd come find you. I mean, some of you are like, no, they wouldn't. Maybe. Well, hopefully <laughs> you train the other them. Direction. <laughs> but if you called their name, they recognize your voice and they come to you. Guys, that is so much what Jesus wants for you. That's what God's plan is for our life, is that we would be so interconnected, so close to him, that we could hear his voice. He calls us out by name. You know he has a plan. You know he has a purpose, but you want to get close enough to hear his voice so you can do what? Follow him. All right, I want to show you what is happening when we are hearing from God. When God is speaking to us, here's what's happening. Verse 4. It says, after he has gathered his own flock, he walks where? Ahead of them. Yep. He, works, he, wor- he walks yep. ahead of us yep. when we are getting that download from him, and we are to do what? Follow. So he's the good shepherd. He walks ahead, and we follow because why? We know his voice. voice. So the word follow in the Greek is akalu theo, 
And it means to accompany, to go along with, to go the same way with, to follow one who proceeds. It's a compound word and the combination of two phrases coming together, meaning that you are walking alongside somebody or that you're with somebody, you're accompanying somebody on a road. And here's the picture that I want you to get in your head when it comes to hearing the voice of God is that God wants to take you somewhere in your life. He's leading, we're to follow him. He's speaking, we're to listen. God wants to take you places in your life and he wants to show you some things, typically things that you never even dreamed possible. Typically things that are far beyond your your ability to comprehend or understand. But God has the most incredible promises and the most incredible plans for your life. And he has them on reserve. We talked just a moment ago about how he has these great and hidden things that aren't revealed until you get hungry and you call out and cry out to him. This is what that looks like. He has these things on reserve and he's going ahead of you. And, And think about this. Think about this path, not just as a dirt road, but think of it as basically time. You know, we serve a timeless God. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the first and the last, the great I am. He's, he is our, our past. He is in our present. He is our future. He's a timeless God. And so I want you to think for a second that if he goes before us as this timeless God and this road is like time, he is 10 steps ahead of us. He knows what is right around the next corner. See, you don't know what the next move is in your life. You don't know what's coming down the the pike next, but guess what? God does. And here's the beauty of being a, a servant of the Lord Most High, of being a sheep, serving this great shepherd, is we can trust him. He's five steps ahead. He loves us. He knows what's around the corner. He's going to protect us. He's going to take care of us. As he's speaking to us, he wants to guide us and reveal to us all the great things that he has for us. We are literally on a path revealing the promises and the plan that he has for our life. Here's the question, though, is have you been walking with him enough? You know, Missy talked about how as, as a, in order for a sheep to really know the shepherd's voice, they have to spend a lot of time together. And I know that that's not what we want to hear because it takes effort, right? But, but the reality is your relationship with God takes effort. If you want to be a mature, fully devoted follower of Jesus Christ, and you want to, you know, maybe you know people in your life, you're like, how do I, man, they tell me all the time, they're talking to me about how they're hearing this from God, and God showed them this, and God showed them that, and I want to be like that. Well, it's not going to happen if you don't invest some time in your relationship with God. So we're going to show you two things before we wrap up today's message, two things uh, that are really common ways for you to be able to hear God's voice and know what God is saying to you. Let's Look, look at them. So the first thing is simply the word of God. This is the easiest way for you to hear from God. I heard somebody say one time, like, I wanted to hear from God. And someone said, well, read your word. And if you want to hear it audibly, read it out loud. And I kind of agree, okay? Because the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, it says that the word of God, all scripture, say all. all. Check this out. All means every single word from Genesis to Revelation, all of it is inspired by God. That means God spoke it to man, 40 different authors over 1,600 years. They didn't even know one another, many of the authors, and the same theme runs from Genesis to Revelation. And that theme, let me just tell you what it is. It's redemption. It is buying back God's people who let sin enter the picture in the, in the garden and all the way to the end talking about us spending eternity with Jesus. That theme runs all the way through. God's word is inspired by him. It is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and it teaches us how to do right. Now listen, the word W-O-R-D, there's two definitions for it in the Bible. When you see W-O-R-D in in his word in the Bible, there are two different definitions. The first one is this, it's logos, say logos. Logos. Look, you just said a Greek word. Good job. It means the written word of God. So it's exactly what I said. It is his story. 
It is his words written for us. Now, if you want to understand an author, you would do what? Go read their books, okay? Their character is going to come out in the books that they have written. And so if you want to get to know God, if you want to get to know his character, if you want to get to know, you know, when I was growing up as a student, as like in high school, everybody had the bracelets, WWJD, which meant... Come on, there we go. What would Jesus do? If you want to know what would Jesus do in any given situation, open Lagos, the written word of God. But then there's another definition for that word, W-O-R-D, and it is rhema. And a rhema word, I love a rhema word because a rhema word, guys, is the living voice of God. Now look at Romans chapter 10. And verse 17, I believe, is where I'm going. It says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That word right there, if you have a a Bible like this, I would take a pen, I would circle it, and out next to it, write rhema. R-H-E-M-A, the living voice of God. What does that mean? It is a personal word directly to you. So let let me make it a little bit easier to understand. You know, a lot of us, if you are a follower of Jesus and you've got your, you know, you've got your um, devotional time kind of laid out in your life, you might be doing a couple chapters a day. Maybe you're doing a reading plan, whatever you're doing. But then sometimes you're just reading along and something like just jumps out at you. It just almost comes off the page at you. That's a rhema word. That's a word that in that season, in that moment, on that special day, whatever it is, God wants to speak that word directly to you. And oftentimes when I am studying, I'll have my highlighter out. And this is why I like a paper Bible. Like I love you version, get you version, have you version on your phone. But guys, there is something about just having it that when you're going through a dark season in your life, listen to me. You're going through a valley and you're having a hard time hearing the voice of God. And to be, let's just be honest, you don't even want to open the word of God. You're disappointed in the way that things are going in your life, the way that God is working in your life. And you begin to open up. And I'll just tell you, there's been times in my life when I did this. I was like, God, I don't want to open my word. I'm so frustrated right now at at the way things are going. But I was a disciplined person. And so I will read my word every day of my life, whether I want to or not. And there were times when I opened it that guys, all my eyes could see were the highlights. But you know, those highlights were rhema words from a time past. So all I needed to do was just go to the rhema words and just begin and it would lift off the pages and it would just be, it would just become like the substance that I would hold on to. And guys, it's those moments in your life when you're like, God, where are you? You begin to get into your word. He begins to illuminate things like I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. When you don't feel like you've got the strength to go one more day, you begin to have a rhema word. You highlight those and it's a personal word to you in those moments. But can I just tell you, a lot of people, they're looking for God to do something more as if this isn't enough. I mean, there are many ways that God speaks. We're gonna go through them in the next few weeks. I mean, he can speak audible. He absolutely can. Very rarely does he do it now. You wanna know why? Because he already gave you all of this. The prophets didn't have this, but we do. But we're like, God, come on now, if you're real, speak audibly. Or or God, I, I wanna see a sign. And man, God will work through all those ways. But here's what I wanna ask you as a follower of Jesus Christ, why don't you take the time to start with the first place and get in the word? I'm telling you, you get here, those other ways that God speaks we're gonna talk about, they'll come, they'll come. But I don't know why he would speak to you any differently when you aren't willing to do this. So get into your word. Amen. All right, another way that God speaks to us is through that still small 
voice. We shared with you briefly last week about the prophet Elijah, and he had just come off the mountain, man. He had just overcome uh, all these hundreds of prophets that were serving false gods, and um, and he saw a great victory that day. And then he met with God, and God positioned him uh, in a place where God could speak to him. And the text says that uh, he, God instructed him, go stand on the mountain. This is in First uh, Kings chapter 19, verse 11. He said, go stand on the mountain at attention before God, and God will pass by. And it says, a hurricane wind ripped through the mountains and and shattered the rocks before God, but God wasn't to be found in the wind. After the wind, an earthquake, but God wasn't in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, fire, but God wasn't in the fire. And after the fire, what was it? A gentle and quiet whisper. And Elijah heard the quiet voice When he heard it, he muffled his face with his great cloak, went to the mouth of the cave, and he stood there. And a quiet voice asked him this question. So, Elijah, now tell me, what are you doing here? This is very common. God will speak to us in this still, small voice. But it's our job as sheep to learn to listen to the voice of our shepherd. We have to quiet ourselves. We have to quiet ourselves to be able to learn, to to listen, to hear his voice. We have physical ears, you know, some bigger than others. Uh, We also have spiritual ears. We all have spiritual ears. And we have to learn, we have to develop an ear to hear spiritually. I want to give you an example. When I was 12 years old, Man, my mom and dad did some things right. They took me to some great churches. Growing up in Kansas City, we went to just some outstanding churches. I loved it. Man, they were hopping. They were, they were, uh, they were moving and grooving. I loved it. We just had some great churches. And I remember one particular church that we were a part of, and they were having this, um, every night there was this evangelist, and man, the music was awesome, and he was preaching just just some, some really intriguing, powerful things. And in, in my life, you know, I'm 12 years old. My parents had raised me uh, to believe in God, to, you know, you know, to believe the Bible, but I never really knew what it was to have a relationship with Christ. I'd never officially really given my heart to Christ or, or asked Jesus to come in my heart. And man, God was just really moving on my heart all week. And I remember it was Friday afternoon. I was at, or, or Friday, I was at school that day and I knew we were going back to church that night. And I just remember hearing, not with audibly, not with my physical ears, but just hearing in my spirit. And I, I didn't know, you know, that there, that there was such a thing as spiritual ears, but I remember just hearing this still small voice in my heart And that voice said, tonight, when the altars open and the evangelist makes that invitation for people to come down front to the altar, go. I remember hearing that. And all day, I was just really, I was nervous, but I was looking for, I was anxious and look, but looking forward to it, anticipating that night. I remember that night came and man, the music was great and the presence of God was powerful and, um, the message was incredible. It just really stirred my heart. And that moment came at the end, all the lights were down and he opened up the altars and he said, anybody who wants to receive Jesus as your personal savior, would just step out of your seat and come down front. And in that moment, I remember 12 years old, I was terrified because all of hell comes loose on your life. You know, when you're on the verge of making that decision to live for God, because Satan does not want you living for God. He doesn't want you taking possession of all God's promises and his purposes and all the blessings that he has for you here on earth and in heaven, your home and all of hell comes against you. And I was just so nervous. I just, I, part of me just did not want to budge, but then there was that voice that came to me again and he said, go. And I remember spinning around and I stepped out into the aisle, 12 years old. And when my foot hit the carpet, I just began weeping. I just began bawling my eyes out. And guess what? I didn't care who was looking at me. I just rushed down to the front and buried my face in the steps. And I just started bawling my eyes out before God and just calling out to him and saying, Jesus, I want you in my life. Save me. And I just remember that moment in that still small voice. He was just saying, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. And it was 
the first time I remember truly hearing the voice of God. And I want to tell you, you know, each and every one of us, you don't have to be a pastor to hear from God. You don't have to be a prophet or some, some you know, TV personality or social media or whatever. I'm, I'm telling you, God wants to talk to you in that still small voice. And he's speaking to you every day. But I'm telling you, you have got to slow down and you've got to get in his word and you have to tune your ears to hear what God has to say to you because he wants to reveal to you great and hidden things about your life, about your past and about your present and about your future and about your calling and the assignment that he has for you. People, places, and things. He wants to connect you to all of these things, but some things you're going to miss out on. You'll never know because you're not going to slow down to just hear what he has to say to you. My, my heart's cry as your pastor is to get your heart stirred and get you to a place where you say, God, I, I want to hear what you say to me because I am I belong to you. I am, I am your sheep and I'm in your fold and I want to follow the voice of my shepherd and I, I just want to follow you and hear you as you lead me into that and down that path of of, of promise and purpose. Let's bow our heads today. Father, God, open the ears of every person in this place and every person that is watching and joining us online. God, open our ears to hear what the voice of the Lord is saying. Father God, your servants are listening. Open our ears. Your word says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God, reveal to us these great and hidden things as we cry out to you, as we read your word, as we hear your voice, as we attune our ears to listen to that still, small voice, just like you spoke to Elijah, speak to us. Just like you spoke to me when I was 12, speak to us. Stir the hearts of your people. With heads bowed and eyes closed, you might be in the same season of life that I was in when I was 12. I believed, yes, that there was a God, but I didn't have a relationship with him. My salvation was not secure. It wasn't finalized because I had not yet repented of my sins and asked God to forgive me of my sins. I hadn't really truly believed through the the, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, the Son of God. I hadn't confessed him to be Lord of my life. And I just want to tell you, it's not by accident that you're here today. It's not by accident that you're watching online today. I'm telling you, God loves you and he drew you right here, right now in this moment because he wanted to talk to you. And he loves you so much. And he's just, he's knocking on your heart's door right now. And he's just saying, why won't you let me in? Just let me in. Let me in. I want to give you peace. I want to give you power. I want to give you a purpose. I want to give you rest. Won't you open the door? Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. The way you do that is by saying, God, forgive me of my sins. And I believe in you to be the son of God through your death, burial, and resurrection. I confess you as Lord of my life. You can do that right now. You can do it today. And we're going to pray this prayer as a church family. And as we pray this prayer, I want you to believe it with all your heart as you receive Jesus as your personal savior today. Let's pray this prayer. Father, forgive me. You are the son of God. And it's only through you I can be saved. So I confess Jesus to be Lord of my life starting now. Open my ears to hear what you are saying to me. Your servant is listening. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Why don't you put your hands together and just give a hand to those who just made the very best decision of their life. If you did just pray that prayer, I want to encourage you to take another step, and that is text the words life change to 844 MMC next. Just snap a pic of that screen. Do it later today. That's going to give you a message from us on what do you do after you pray that prayer because God has an incredible plan for your life. Also, as you exit the doors today, we have a gift called the Next Step Kit. We want to encourage you to take one if you're here on campus. If you're online, just direct message us your address and we'll mail you that gift in the morning. It's got a brand new Bible. It's got some things laid out for you that are going to help you on your new journey. Well, just a reminder, as Brandy told you earlier, midweek is back. We are ready for fall. Tuesday, Wednesday night, get here, get connected, get involved, guys. This is how you grow, all right? This 
is, is incredible. Sunday morning, setting in rows, worshiping corporately together. You hear the word, but guys, Tuesday and Wednesday, you begin to learn how to apply the word of God to your life. You make some friends that will last a lifetime doing this thing called journeying with Jesus together. So get back here for midweek. We love you all. We'll see you Tuesday or Wednesday night. Love you guys. See you for midweek.